Welcome to the Architect of Resilience podcast, where we explore the secrets of overcoming life's challenges and unlocking unstoppable strength through deep personal conversations and expert insights. Welcome to the Architect of Resilience podcast. Now, this podcast is being published on an existing channel, Kabuki Strength. And you may be wondering, well, what happened, Chris? What happened to the team? Are you still with Kabuki? What's going on? And why is this in your shop? Let's get to that, but I don't want to bore maybe new listeners too much, so let's get to more of like what this podcast is and what it's about, because it's about crafting and creating, not things like in my mad scientist lair that I'm inventing, but your life. It's about empowering people with the development of resilience, body, mind, and soul, to realize and find your own values and your vision for life through the chaos and uncertainty in the world around us, which seems more relevant today than than ever. This podcast, to understand why it's different, I think you have to understand my passion around this topic. So I don't have any guests on this opening one. This is just a short piece to talk about the framework and where this podcast is going, the types of conversations that are going to be had. So my passion can obviously be articulated in my best-selling autobiography, The Eagle and the Dragon, but let me give the cliffs for people that don't know me super fast. But I grew up homeless in the wilderness in an area called Murder Mountain. Yeah, the same one from that Netflix series. So if you have any doubts about some of the things that I say, yeah, I was actually 50 miles deeper and more remote than where that took place. So yeah, drug abuse, <laughs> abuse, murderers, a serial killer, human trafficking, you name it, I've lived it. And by some miracle, I got myself out. And in do so, I took custody of my three younger siblings and I raised them while I was working my way through a college and a career. The next little bit might sound like I'm like bragging, pump myself up, but it's really just like setting the framework for, again, my passion and why I'm diving into this concept. I became a turnaround executive, chasing feats of strength that no other human has done before or since in some of those. Nice time to plug the upcoming documentary, by the way, Grand Goals around that. Uh, I hope that's out this year. Uh, producer's still working on it. Now, this podcast is about sharing that secret formula of finding unstoppable strength through those seemingly insurmountable struggles, using the opportunity I had to learn about strength and resiliency from experts around the globe. That's the unique thing as I ended up in a position to be able to do that. And this podcast is going to be a continuation of those conversations that I've had and new ones to share with you, to learn the ability to harness your mind, body, and soul. Continued discussions with leading doctors, researchers, coaches, clinicians, athletes, business leaders, authors, people that have experienced superhuman or achieved superhuman results. Whether it be forging your own path, I call the endless evolution, internal strength and self-awareness, human and organizational behavior, injury prevention and recovery, longevity, quality of life. We're looking at how can we amplify our resilience, our strength to be able to empower us with the ability to create and frame our own life. So I've been privileged to have many of those conversations and be connected with a great group of people. And that is the Architect of Resilience podcast and what we're doing here. So let's get to the Kabuki piece. I feel that these conversations are much better had at a personal level. And so they're going to be deep one-on-one -on -one conversations. And I don't want them tied to a conversation coming from a brand or company, but with me, from me, with our audience. And so with that depth, there's also going to come the endless evolution community. So to take this a step further, there's a discord community that people can join. 
you're welcome to join. Uh, you go to chrisduffin.com, you can find the link to that. So absolutely free to get in, uh, check that out. There's a lot of extras that'll be associated with that. And everything around that endless is around physiological amplification or the mental amplification. A lot of stuff plays a role into uh, leadership and how you, and leadership it doesn't mean like, you know, owning a company necessarily, but leadership in your own life, your family, being able to have tough conversations and move that forward. And so if we get back to, you know, the, the kabuki, right? So yeah, that's why I've shifted and taken this platform to do this because kabuki is definitely focused on physical strength. It's focused on community and I want to take that a step further because my passion is a much larger. I'm really happy that Kabuki will be a sponsor as will barefoot <laughs> shoes and barefoot boots. Absolutely tremendous foot health, foot mechanics, absolute premium build fast formula. Uh, the absolute best in formulations to amplify your physiological uh, aspect, which again will tie into that in some of these conversations that we have. So those are the existing title sponsors of this, but this podcast is me. And there's going to be conversations that are out there in depths of areas that probably are not appropriate to be necessarily associated with, you know, a brand. And so I think that this platform has allowed me to do that and really just do it from a focus of what I personally want to explore and go. And a lot of this is around being able to set your mind in a state that you can free yourself from the fear, the anxiety, the pressures that drive us to make decisions. And I reflect on, you know, the opening chapter of my book when I was six years old and I was holding that rattlesnake in my hand and that rattlesnake was wrapping around my arm and just that slithery cold feeling and you could look down into the eyes of that beast. Beast may not be the accurate word, but that being wanted to do nothing more than strike and kill me. And I learned more in that moment about fear to impact my life in a positive manner because when you're staring at that and understanding, I was taught how to capture and handle live rattlesnakes at this age because that's there was a lot of rattlesnake dens around our camp where we were out in the forest. And so I knew how to chase them out from under the bush with a, a, a stick. If you could heard the rattle, I had my little brother with me and get him to strike. And then you could take the fork of the stick and get them. And then you'd pick them up behind the, behind the head. Why? So we could kill it, eat it, skin it, sell the skins later. But the thing with fear is it can paralyze you. It can stop your mind from working and put you in a state where you can't make decisions. And so you need to be able to control fear. And it is definitely not the no fear mentality. Fuck that. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is just, that is another way for death. If you don't respect fear, and use that to identify it is there for a reason. But our response to that and how we manage that is really important. And I see so many people and myself through the course of my life where I have let that create this lens and particularly around being in a moment of having a lot of things, right? Not maybe physical things, a moment in life, a career, a relationship, so much. And taking and looking at that from a set of, how do I not lose this? And that fear mentality can hold you back from so much and seeing so much opportunity. If you can strip that away and be able to look at and understand who you are, what you truly desire and your values and the way that you want to live and be in the world. 
and the opportunities that are out there and the different paths that you can realize that, that you can make change in this world and impact it in the way that you want. Maybe even leave a legacy. But we lose it because of this. We're operating in this fear mentality of how do I not lose what I have instead of realizing the past has happened. It's in the rear view mirror. Nothing can take away what you've lived, what you've learned, what you've earned. It's in the rear view mirror. It cannot be taken. You need to be focused looking out the front windshield of life, of your car, to realize that if you're looking in the rear view mirror, that's what you're going to see is the past. How do I not get hit by that car? Maybe good to glance back there to be reflective. But we need to look at those opportunities and then understand, oh, there's a million things that I didn't see. And I have what I have to leverage. But what I can do is now use everything that I have. That's an awesome resource. Maybe you go another direction. Maybe you stay the course. But opening your eyes to that, and I think that's a great introductory lesson for, for people is to take this exercise this next week as you digest this podcast and think about what would I do if I was at ground zero, I was plucked up, dropped in another spot, and had to make my way to build my life, to build my relationships, to build uh, a career, to build resources. What would I do? How would I go about doing that? And spend some time, spend days thinking about what that would be. That's a great exercise that I do. And then after you do that, well, let's take a step back and go, okay, I'm here right now. And this is what I have to work with me. I've got an amazing partner. I've got like, we start taking for granted all the things that we have and not using them and then shutting down those opportunities with the visor, that fear lens that's on there. And this is, yeah, I think this is a good path for this first episode is to leave this as the exercise. And so I went through this in the starting the foundation of Kabuki and then Barefoot and Build Fast. I was sitting there, I had, sorry to bore people that have read my book, but I, I was sitting there in my late thirties. I had two kids, a house with a white picket fence. I had a career where I was sought after. I, you know, I was poached. They'd pay recruiters a hundred grand to like find and recruit me to a new company to come in and uh, do what I did. Like I had a gym on the side. I was competing as a world-class athlete. I will lose that, use that term strictly as a strength athlete. It's not quite the same as a professional, but <clears throat> I was one of the strongest people in the world and had been for quite some time. So I had all these things, <clears throat> but I started looking at the opportunities in front of me and I realized the change that I could bring in the world and it could be so much more than what I was doing. And I ended up walking away from everything for the most part, except for my kids in my life and rebuilding and reframing it in such a manner that it allowed me to do so much more. It's the reason you're probably listening to me or watching me today is a result of those decisions to be able to make products to, I'm really proud of the fact I, I penetrated sports performance in those following years faster than any other company in history. That's really fucking cool. And became a recognized leader in a completely different area than where my master's and my engineer, like the background was, although I guess there's some sort of tie in if I'm still like inventing and creating stuff, but I was more on the process uh, side before. And that means that yes, there may be another shift coming in life. There may be more other things that I take on or do. And so we'll see what that is. And I, I anticipate that there's going to be some major changes like that over this next year 
as I embark on this podcast, as I walk through these conversations again, and you do so as well. And so that'll be a really interesting thing for those that listen to see just what that is and what that can be for myself personally. To me, I'm really excited about this podcast. That's for sure. This tells me, there's a feeling in my gut that tells me that this is a path, a thing that I need to move forward on and embark. And I'm really excited to share those lessons that I'm taking and I'm learning firsthand and sharing with you. And I hope that some of you come and join in the Endless Evolution where we also discuss these further, have special assignments from some of these leaders as they're presenting to the podcast, but leaving assignments for our Endless Evolution group. That isn't something that you listen to, it is something that you live. Something that every week you can take these tools and take a fresh look to expose your life on how you view things and how you act in this world to bring about change. That is been, so that's where the framework up front around my passion, because that is what I've done my entire life and career is to challenge that of myself and those around me. And that can obviously be a little hard sometimes for those people that are in my circle, but phenomenal things come out of it. Life-changing things come out of this. And this is what I want for you is to be able to do just what I said in the front of this, but empower you through the development of resilience in your body and mind and soul to realize your own set of values. No one else. There's no one that you can look to in the world that can go, that right there is the model of what I want to be and I need to mimic and try to create and mimic. There's nobody that has your distinct set of experiences and values in this, in this world and you need to develop your own action plan to be able to realize that, to craft and create your own life, to become the architect of your own resilience. Thank you.